So the plan is set, but it was a wild road getting there. Just take a look at this graph from our analytics group that shows how the seating in the West looked throughout the afternoon. You can see below the Pelicans for a brief period after 520 Eastern, they were heading toward the six seed and then it all sort of went south. Just a wild up and down there. But one team that we know will not be in the mix of the play-in tournament as it gets underway tomorrow is the Dallas Mavericks. And the Mavs, they only played Luka Doncic for 13 minutes against the Bulls on Friday. They also sat their next four leading scorers in their loss to Chicago, and that ended their season. So with the Mavs summer ending or a little starting a little bit earlier than anticipated, our Tim McMahon, he took a look back at what happened and the potential ramifications moving forward here for Dallas. It took two months for the Mavericks to go from buzzing about a blockbuster trade to busted. That eliminates Dallas from playing tournament contention. To be clear, Kyrie Irving has been a professional, not the problem, during his brief stint in Dallas. Kyrie Irving has arrived in Dallas and he has done what you expected him to do. But he sure hasn't been the solution to all that ails the Mavs. That's a long list that begins with a bad defense that got worse with the midseason trade and chemistry that's a far cry from the immaculate vibes felt during last year's run to the West Finals. Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks are going to the Western Conference Finals. Add it all up, and the Mavs qualify as the NBA's most disappointing team this season. As the Mavs leader, Luka Doncic says to put the blame on him. I'm the leader of this team, you know, the one to blame is me. He definitely deserves a share, especially for the dreadful defense, but there's plenty of blame to go around. Give a big slice to Mark Cuban in the front office for bungling the Jalen Brunson situation. Dallas didn't give Brunson an extension when he wanted one and watched Luca's sidekick leave for nothing when Brunson went to New York in free agency. How much have you guys missed Brunson? <laughs> a lot. Amazing guy, amazing player. For sure. Speaking of the Knicks, the Mavs will have to sweat out the lottery as they owe New York a top 10 protected pick as the final payment on the Chris Tapp's Porzingis trade. As far as free agency goes, the Mavs hope not to lose their second leading scorer for the second straight summer. The game of basketball is uh, very emotional as it is, and um, if I'm already thinking about what's the response going to be, whether we win or lose, then I've already failed. Uh, just got to stay focused on the goal at hand, and that's just being there for my teammates while we're playing out there and staying connected. The biggest questions for the Mavs? After a massive step in the wrong direction, can they build a contender around Doncic? And how long is Luka willing to wait to find out? So after the Mavs season ended on Sunday, Kyrie Irving, he declined to address the media in an exit interview, but Luka Doncic did, and he shared his final thoughts on what happened and what needs to happen moving forward. I didn't like that decision. That's it. You're talking about the decision to, to say pass? Yeah. Was it discussed with you before the decision was made? Yeah, of course. I'm happy here, so there's nothing to worry about. How much did you enjoy playing with Kyrie and how much would you like to see that continue? Yeah, I, I wish we can continue that, uh, you know, uh, chemistry, relationship. Uh, it's not going to happen in a day, in a week, uh, so it's a building process, uh, but I would like to, yeah. What has to happen for the, you know, you guys went to the West Finals last year. It's not like you haven't been able to win a lot. What has to happen for this franchise to get right? Uh, I mean, something's got to change, you know. Okay, so Ramona Shelburne is back with us now, and there's just so much uncertainty, Ramona, that surrounds the Dallas Mavericks, and I think it starts May 16th, right, with how the ping pong balls <laughs> fall for the draft lottery. But let's stick with Luka Doncic yeah. here for just a minute. How's he feeling? What are you hearing about him in the wake of everything that went down the last couple so of days? So you know Luka, right? Yeah. He does not like drama. He does not like answering those kind of questions. So for him to even say that... Mm. That's saying a lot, okay? And look, if you look at the glass half full, Jason Kidd told me, I think he's going to win MVP next year. He's going to have a great year. They sound a lot like the Sixers did last year when they traded for James Harden in the middle of the season. They give him one more year, one more transaction cycle. They're going to be great if Kyrie Irving ends up staying there. Look, Joel, it looked, worked out. Joel Embiid's probably going to win MVP. Maybe Jason Kidd is right. But if you look at the glass half empty, 
they have a lot of work to do. Right. And one of the questions is about Kyrie Irving, as you yeah. mentioned. And we heard Luka Doncic say yep. that he would like to play again with Kyrie Irving. But what is the likelihood that that happens from the Mavericks standpoint? They feel really good about their chances of keeping Kyrie Irving. And when they traded for him, there was a they had an option, obviously, to sign him for a two-year extension. He wants more than two years. When he was in Brooklyn, they talked about a two-years-plus extension. So two years and a team option on the third year. Kyrie wants four. Mm. So it may come down to whether or not they're willing to go to that fourth year. If he has if he has leverage outside the Mavericks, they may have to go further than they initially want to go. But they feel good about their chances of keeping him. And he has quite a bit of leverage because, quite frankly, they cannot lose him. Right. They already lost Jalen Brunson for nothing. They cannot lose Kyrie Irving for nothing. And they have a lot of work to do to keep Luka Doncic in the fold, happy, building off of what they did, because they took a step back this year. And when you have a player like Luka Doncic, I compare him all the time to LeBron James. Yep. Cleveland did a lot of moves over the years to keep LeBron happy. Yes. E for effort. It didn't pay off. Right, but the proof is in the pudding. And as we heard Tim McMahon say in that piece yep. that we just heard, they are in early contention for most disappointing season oh. in the NBA because the expectations <laughs> yeah. for Dallas were sky high and it just did not materialize in the postseason. And we know yep. that that's when it matters. So the Warriors, they are favored to win their first round series against the Kings. That's despite not having home court advantage. That's according to Caesar Sportsbook. They also have the second shortest odds to come out of the West and are the fourth favorite to win the title. So for more on Golden State, we're joined by our Warriors reporter, Kendra Andrews. And Kendra, the Warriors will open up their series against the Kings on Saturday on ABC at 830. I'll be on the sidelines for that one. We know, though, this is the matchup that Draymond Green, he wanted. He <laughs> talked about the proximity, the highway matchup. But how are the Warriors digesting this now that it's actually been set? I mean... The Warriors, they're not looking past the Kings, right? The Kings are finally breaking this drought. They are, they're not favorites, right? But the Warriors are taking this very seriously, and they see this as a potentially explosive offensive series, right? These are two of the highest scoring teams in the league. The Kings, they have the best offensive rating in the league. You look at the matchups of Nemanja Sabonis versus Draymond Green, mm. De'Aaron Fox versus Steph Curry. Malika, there were 20 NBA players this season who finished with two, 200 three-pointers or more. Five of them are in this series. So the Warriors are looking at this as a serious test, but what they are com confident with is their defense and mm. that playoff defense. The Kings, they struggle a little bit more on that end, so the Warriors are feeling good in that regard. Yeah, when you're talking about one and two in points per game, this is going to be an offensively <laughs> electric series. Hello, everyone. Series. Welcome to Richard Jefferson oh. show and look 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 it's National Siblings Day That's part of the reason why we had Malika in here because obviously we know you're everyone's favorite We get that we know your mom's favorite too. Yeah, but we have to discuss that. No, yeah. We know we don't care Richard, about that. Richard, you're their parents favorite really. I am obviously my favorite because I'm the most wealthy sibling of all my siblings But we this. have two I other so. very wealthy siblings Richard. that I would like oh. to bring on oh. The Lopez brothers are in the building. Welcome my, to oh. NBA my Today, Pac gentlemen. 12 brothers you have a very serious case this year for Defensive Player of the Year. To you, why should that award go to you? Um, you know, it, it's an honor to be uh, in that conversation. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm thankful to be playing on such a great team with great teammates, you know, Drew Holiday, Giannis, who lock up uh, whenever they get the chance. Um, you know, and I, I just, I do take pride in kind of being the quarterback uh, and being the leader of that defense, you know, being on, being the center, being uh, behind everyone, being able to see the whole court, talk things out, lead the defense. I take a lot of pride uh, in doing that. No, I, I think that is a great answer, but I think because it's siblings day, yeah. we want to know, Robin, why do you believe or do not believe he should win defensive player of the year? You can pick, bro. I mean... All I know is when it counted later in the season, we beat them twice in a row. <laughs> so I know Evan, I think, had a 40-point game or something. J.A. did his thing. So I do want to know what my bio looks like. You know, I see Brooks got like, you know, like national little national championship thing at the bottom. Yeah. Drafted 10th. <laughs> like, what are my interesting tidbits that ESPN has to pull up? You're, you're Brooks' brother. That's what that's that's, that's your that's your It's number. okay. I get it. I'm, yeah. I'm Malika's sister, so yeah, I guess that. Same here. You get it. No, 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 Robin. That is a great case for your brother, in some way. I don't know if it is or for him against him. I don't understand. But I just want to say, Kendra, Malika, you guys, 
You guys are pretty good siblings. I don't know if you're as good as these two. I think that Brooke and Robin are the siblings of the NBA. We very much appreciate you joining us here on NBA Today. The voting for Defensive Player of the Year, it ends tonight. Ooh. And before we go, though, Robin, I do want to play just a little game. Cut, bench, start. NBA mascots, Disneyland, Ooh. big playoff game. NBA mascots, Disneyland, big playoff game. Cut, bench, start. Um, I mean... I got to start the big playoff game. That's what's right on my schedule coming up. Bench Disneyland. Now, you know, once we're done with our business, once we take care of, you know, business, depending on possible certain matchups in the second round too, taking care of business in that regard. So, uh, summer comes, we're successful. Disneyland. And then bench the NBA mascots. They don't <laughs> yeah. bring anything to them. They don't, they yeah. don't contribute anything to the conversation. Yeah. Well, I got to say, I cannot wait. Assuming both of you all win your first round series, we would get a Lopez Brothers matchup in the second round of the Eastern Conference playoffs, and that would be so much fun. Gentlemen, thank you so much for thank spending a little guys, time man. with us here on NBA Today. We appreciate it. So we had some great plays throughout the season, but one of the best moments, um, it happened yesterday, Richard. Miami in his 20th and final season, Udonis Haslam, the three-time champion, he was honored. They even got him a rocking chair. No, it was on, on, on Honestly, amazing to see. Shout out, Udonis. Udonis, these are my words to you. So many players have, have benefited from your tutelage, from your words, from your expertise. Every veteran that is out the league talks about how important it is to have veterans on your bench, and he is one of the guys that we would always point to. He deserves to have his numbers in that Raptors, and he's been an outstanding ambassador. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.